Hey folks, uh, this lesson is uh, more about shape, center, and spread. So in the last lesson we did uh, line plots, we calculated the quartiles, first and third quartile, we calculated the median, the mean, the standard deviation. And so here we're going to use that information and calculate some more stuff, or actually make some graphs with this, you guys. So. So we're going to talk more about some different graphs. So here we go. So um, in, in section B of the last section, you're given the 20 uh, weights of babies in kilometer, or kilograms. Sorry. So you don't have to write down those 20 numbers again. But what we're going to do is make a histogram of that data and then analyze the graph. Okay. Well, since we already made a line plot of that data, um, it's really going to be helpful, this line plot, for us to make a histogram. If we didn't do this, then I'd have to make a frequency table and calculate how many of each number we had. So a frequency table would be, you know, on the left um, would be the numbers, on the right would be the frequencies, okay? So there would be 1, 3.2, there would be 2 at 3.3, uh, 4 at 3.4, 6 at 3.5 and so on. So down here we'd list the weights and over here we'd list the frequencies, okay? And then you build a, 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 a chart right here, a vertical bar for the frequencies right here. And then down here is going to be the baby's weights right here in, in kilograms, okay? All right, and this, this uh, little springboard thing has a name. I forgot what it is, but it's a springboard. It takes us from zero and springs us up to our first number that we need. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, make a histogram, and a histogram is a fancy name for a bar graph, except the bars are squished together. Okay, they're touching each other. So at 3.2, it goes up there. It's going to go up to 1, so this will be 1. So I'll go up to 1 right there, and then go over, and then what I'm going to do before I go down the next line, I'm going to go over to right about there, the next one goes up to 2, so now I'm going to go up to 2, so pick up where we left off there. This one's going to go up to 2, and then we're going to go over, and then uh, and then don't draw your up line yet until we know how far we're going to go up. This one's going to go from 3.4, is going to go up to 4, so here's my bar that represents 3.4. You guys have done this before. Remember this? Okay. So this is going to go over, and the next one is going to go right about there. Um, it's going to go up. There's six of them. So we're going to make this bar go up to six. Okay. And this will represent our 3.5. Okay. And hopefully you're using a straight edge. Hint, 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 my students. Okay. Teachers like it when you do nice, neat graphs. I do too. All right, and then just keep doing that. So you're going to make this graph that kind of looks like that. Okay. All right, so describe the shape now because it says analyze this graph. Well, look, this is very symmetrical, just like the line graph. It's going to be symmetrical. These are pretty much the same thing. And so when it's symmetrical, then we can say it's um, a normal distribution. Okay. All right. Remember, uniform distribution, if they make like a rectangle, if they're all about the same height. But this is a normal distribution. And skewed distribution would be like if we had, you know, a bunch over here and then it went down in this direction. Remember doing the skewed distribution on our, I think it was the mother's ages. Yeah, it was. So here it is right here. So from section C in the last lesson, we we're given the, the mother's ages of the 20 mothers right there. Okay. So make a, a box plot this time or a box and whisker plot and analyze the data. I'm finding about half of my students have done box and whisker plots before, so it's not hard, you guys. The box part comes from the uh, quartile 1, the median, and quartile 3, and then the whiskers extend out to the smallest number and the biggest number, okay? So it's helpful um, to, well, it's not helpful. We have to rearrange them from smallest to biggest, you guys. So if you don't already have them rearranged, then go ahead and rearrange them, but we do from the line plots yesterday. So we're gonna, I'm going to write down the numbers 28, 28, 29, 29, 29, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, all the way till we get to 39, okay? So there they are. Okay, so then the middle is our median. So the median between these two numbers is 30.5. And then quartile 1 is the median from these guys. So quartile 1 would be over there, and there's quartile 3 right there. So the box comes from these three numbers right here. So when we do that. Here's the number line that represents all of these numbers, and we're going to make a box. 
a rectangle from 29 to 30.5 to 32.5. So 29 will be right here. I'm going to draw a little vertical line and do the same size vertical line at 30.5. So right there, and then the same one at 32.5 right there. There's my box for my box and whiskers. Okay, now the whiskers are going to extend out to the smallest number, which is 28. So it's going to go right there, and then we'll just put a little line right there to where it ends. And the biggest number is 39, so it's going to go way over here. Okay, so there's the whiskers from 28 to 39. Okay, now, can you see that this side is a little bit bigger than this side, and definitely this whisker is longer than this whisker? Well, that just tells me that this data is skewed to the right. Okay, remember, this is the median right here. This is quartile 1. This is quartile 3. This is the smallest number. This is the biggest number, okay? All right, so here's another one. So this list uh, 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 gives the ages of random sample of 16 people who visited a doctor's office one day make a box plot. So we first got to rearrange those numbers from smallest to biggest. So there they are, rearranged. I just did that, okay? So let's find the middle number. There's the middle. So it's halfway between 75 and 78, so 76.5. All right, and then the middle half of these numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's the fourth and fifth number would be our first quartile. So in the average of 64 and 70 is 67. And then over here, the average of 80 and 80 is 80. So we're going to make a box from 67 to 76 to 80 right there. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, now we're going to have a whisker that goes all the way out to 35. So way over here. And then another whisker that goes just to 82. So right there. So there's our whiskers right there. Okay, this one is, can you see that this side is definitely larger than this side? And this whisker is definitely larger than this whisker. So that means this graph is skewed to the left right there. Okay, so um, uh, this distribution is skewed to the left. All right, now what I want you to recognize, well, in just a second here. So suppose. Suppose that uh, one of the ages is chosen at random. Okay, so there's, uh, what, 16 people in there? What can we say that is the approximate probability that the age falls between quartile 1 and quartile 3? Well, check this out. Let's go back to this right here. Remember, the quartiles, what they did is they, they separate up the data. They, here's quartile 1 right there. Here's the median right there. Here's quartile 3 right there. So what it's doing is it's separating up the data into four equal pieces of numbers. There's four numbers here, there's four numbers here, four and four. So it's cutting them up into 25. This is 25% of the data, this is 25% of the data, 25, 25%. So this question is asking this, you guys. What's the probability that we pick a number in that section right there? Well, you know they're all 25% of the data right there. So uh, the percent of picking a number in this uh, box part would be 25 plus 25 or 50%. Okay? Make sense? All right. So if you are in my class, I'm going to give you guys a worksheet. Now, I have them here. You're just going to have to learn to use your pause feature. Okay? So, so the first two slides next are the first, the front half, 20.1. So here's the word problem, and then the questions and everything else follow on the second one that I'm doing. So hopefully you can pause it right here. Okay? Here's the questions to that. All right? And then the back side. Here's the, the top half of the back side. Okay, now notice 2 is right here, and so the questions that follow are on the second one here. So here's the questions for 2, and then here's number 3 right there. Okay, hope that makes sense. Take care.